So I chose this topic because number one, with everything going on right now, there are a lot of athletes speaking out on social issues. And number two, because I follow Tori Smith, the wide receiver for, for the San Francisco 49ers on Twitter. And the amount of stick to sports tweets he received is ridiculous. Like it's absolutely crazy. So I wanted to speak on this topic. And with every topic that I choose, I do research and I encourage participation because I want to see both sides, whether I agree with it or not. I want to have a full understanding of what I'm talking about. But that proved to be difficult for this topic simply because it seemed like every comment that I got in every email basically said that athletes have the right to speak out on politics and social issues. And even when I looked up articles and essays and video clips, everybody pretty much agreed with that notion. The few articles that I found that disagreed were referring to sports writers and not necessarily athletes. And I find that crazy because it seems like every time an athlete speaks out on a social issue, it's like... Look at Colin Kaepernick kneeling. Even more recently, look at Martellus Bennett saying he doesn't want to go to the White House. People freak out over these things. But what I did notice is that people that disagreed and felt politics and athletics should stay separate were usually in comment sections and they were on social media. And of all the comments that I saw, usually they made three points. Number one, that athletes live in a bubble and they don't understand what's going on in the real world with regular people. Number two, they usually disagreed with the athlete's stance on an issue. And number three, that even if they felt athletes have a right to speak out, the court or the field was not the proper place for it. And I found a Breakfast Club interview with Jamel Hill and Michael Smith, and they specifically asked this question of if athletes should stick to sports. And I really like Michael Smith's answer to the question. Um, it was I, I, always I turned that to ESPN way. for an escape. Well, you have that, you have that privilege. You can't escape from this. This yeah. is the reality, not just for a lot of people, but this is a reality for athletes. A lot of the reasons that athletes are speaking up because they're realizing it could be them. They could mm -hmm. be next, that their, their, their salaries, their position, their notoriety, their fame does not protect them from systemic racism or police brutality or whatever the case may be. What is like a lot of you said, athletes are citizens too. And I'm not even gonna say that we don't live in a bubble because some of us do. But I feel like people say that athletes don't understand what's going on because they may be in a different tax bracket or their lifestyle is different than most other people. But you can't make that assumption that they don't understand because you don't know their reality. You don't know who they interact with, you don't know who their family is, and you don't know what their situation was before they were professional athletes. For example, when we decided to kneel for the national anthem in the Phoenix playoff game, we received a lot of support and we received a lot of resistance. And Marissa Coleman in particular received a lot of backlash because she did an interview and talked about what we did and why we did it. And the people that lashed out against her were saying how she doesn't understand what the military does for this country and how they fight for our freedom and if she doesn't appreciate and understand all that they do to make this country what it is that she should lead. So the next day, Marissa responded with a letter and she said that her father is a retired police officer. Her brother-in-law fought for the country and her boyfriend is in the Navy, was in the Navy. So she absolutely understood. So you, you can't make those assumptions and say that you, they don't understand what's going on when a lot of us do. And on top of that, we're affected by everything that's going on in the country, especially WNBA players, because not only do we have to pay attention to what's going on in, in the country here and how it affects us personally, but we have to understand what's going on here and how it affects other countries because we spend majority of our year overseas playing basketball and we make the bulk of our money over there. So if it becomes unsafe for us to go overseas, that affects how we make our living. So WNBA and players in particular definitely have to pay attention and we do understand because we have to for our own safety and understanding when we leave the country. So normally when I do topics like this, I refer to comments or emails that I received, but the one comment that I got that said that athletes and politics should stay separate got deleted before I could screenshot it. But basically what she said was that even though athletes absolutely have the right to speak out on social and political issues, she felt that the court was not the place for it. And she brought up 
the example of the Minnesota Lynx when they wore the Black Lives Matter Dallas 5 t-shirts. And she said that they were divisive and didn't promote communication and that even the police officers left the game, even though she didn't necessarily agree with that. So I brought up the point that of all the t-shirts that were worn in the WNBA supporting Black Lives Matter, the Minnesota Lynx were actually the least divisive because they not only acknowledged Black Lives Matter, but they also acknowledged the Dallas police officers that were killed and that those officers that left the game were particularly stupid because they weren't disrespecting them at all. And then after I said that, she deleted all her comments and so I didn't get a chance to screenshot it. But it made me think that she had more of an issue with the fact that they were promoting Black Lives Matter more so than the fact that they were so-called disrupting the entertainment. And here's the thing. When is the right time or the proper place to protest? A lot of you know Tommy Lauren. She was on The Daily Show with Trevor Noah and he made a pretty intelligent point about that. specifically talking about Colin Kaepernick so he was referring to black men in general but what he was saying applies to anybody that's protesting or trying to protest and I really find it funny when people say that it's not the proper time or the proper place because I imagine that this is what they think a protest is supposed to look like Protest is not meant to be comfortable. The entire purpose is that it makes people so uncomfortable that they have to talk about issues and they have to make changes. And with athletes in particular, we can reach such a large audience that we can promote dialogue. I know for me in particular, after we knelt during the anthem, I posted a picture on social media of us and I received a lot of comments and a lot of messages from people that disagreed with what we did. But I was able to talk to those people and by the end of our conversation with a lot of them, they understood. So what we did served its purpose and that's the power that athletes have is that they can create these conversations and be huge proponents of change. So we absolutely need to continue to speak out on political and social issues and never simply stick to sports. That's all I got for today. If you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel and make sure you get notifications every time I post a video. And as always, thank you for watching Down and Dirty with Deborah. I'll catch you guys next time.